<sighs> All right, guys, good morning. It's a hot one today. So the last video you guys watched was either me first trying out the, the bike with the airbox mod or uh, this is a new video. So <laughs> we'll just see what we got here. Um, anyways, it was really, it was a little bit more responsive in terms of the, where, where's my tools at? Where are my tools at? It was a little bit more responsive in terms of, um, in terms of like throttle response, but it didn't really give me anything else. So what we're going to try to do is, uh, get more fuel in there. And I have that option because I do have the, the, the Dino, Dynajet, uh, Power Commander. I believe it's called the Power Commander. I can't remember, but I got to access it through here. Uh, I think the, I don't think I posted a video on the install because it was kind of a, a little bit more difficult of an install than I than I realized it would be. So let's see here if I remember how to do this right. I think it was just under here. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Dang, hopefully I don't have to remove my seat. There we go. Uh, so here it is right here, the Dynajet. Uh, let me see, can't quite remember. There we go. Just unclicks like that. And then you have your mid, your low, mid, and high. And then there's two little dots. I don't know if you can see those, but essentially I'm at stock tuning right now. So what I need to do is since that airbox mod um, gives throttle throughout the rev ranges, we are going to change all of our settings. So what we do is we just change, we just go ahead and click it over with, uh, gosh dang it, I don't have anything sharp enough. Let me see, we just go ahead and jam something in there and you give it one click, if it'll click, boop. So that's more, we're just gonna give more all along the same and then hopefully we can dial this thing in uh, via riding and throttle feel and top speed, we'll go two clicks on the high, two clicks on the mid, one click on the low. And that's that. You, of course, you can program different versions in there. You have 10 programmable things, but I don't know how that works. It, and, you know, it's better to have a tuner to do that, as in to go to a tuner. But this bike doesn't have an O2 sensor or anything like that. So it is kind of, kind of like shooting, shooting in the dark. Uh, but hey, it's a, it's a single cylinder motorcycle air cooled. What do you expect? But I'm going to go ahead and button this thing back up and get on the road. But I just wanted to show you guys that, uh, this is kind of the second half that you need with that air box mod is if you add more fuel or add more air, you need to add more fuel as well. That's where you're going to get the power. So let me put this back together. Gosh, I should have taken my seat off. That's what I should have done. Huh. I guess I didn't really need to. This nut was totally loose, by the way. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, now that we're riding this thing, we get to test it in the, test that air box. Made a little modification to my fuel mapping using my Dynajet uh, Power Commander. I think it's called a Power Commander, isn't it? I can't remember what it is, but they don't sell it in the United States anymore. Got the green. They don't sell it in the United States anymore, so I had to, I had to buy mine for an uh, exorbitant amount from the UK. So I think I managed to buy the last one in the United Kingdom, but uh, yeah, it was it was pretty expensive, pretty expensive. I think I paid 340 US dollars for it and another like 50 bucks in shipping. So yeah, it was not cheap to go do that, but that's kind of the price that you pay for 
parts that are no longer shipped and sold in the United States. Um, so what I did is I added one click on the, the low, two clicks on the medium, and two clicks on the high. And uh, we'll see kind of what kind of performance that gives us. Uh, when I didn't have, when I was still on stock mapping, because you can still have a stock map on the Dynajet, the stock mapping was, um, I didn't really see a significant difference. But just pulling out of my neighborhood, I really felt some acceleration change in the mids. Yeah, like, it just picks up a lot faster. So, like, not by, not, not to justify $400 and, you know, a 3D printer and, you know, all that stuff. But for those of you guys who have carbureted XT250s, changing a jet is way easier than doing fuel mapping on an EFI bike. Um, let's see. I wonder if I'm going to gain any top speed. I do have the, I do have a different uh, sprocket on the front of the bike. I think I have a, a 16 tooth sprocket. I didn't change the rear at all, but that kind of evened out my, my miles per hour on my speedometer. So what it's reading is actually true, uh, which is amazing because uh, it does, the, the stock speedo does read incorrectly from the factory, but the, with the, the what, with the 15 or the 16 tooth, I can't, I think it's the 15 tooth sprocket. With the 15 tooth sprocket, it does even it out. So that is a very nice feature. Oh, it's so hot. Yeah, feels like I got a little bit more power. You know what I mean? Definitely from the stop. But we'll see when we get on the highway as well. So honestly, based on everything that I have right now, I'm running the stock exhaust because as you guys know, my FMF exploded. Uh, with the airbox mod and with the fuel change, it does feel like there's a little bit more power. Uh, I, 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 I miss, I kind of miss, uh, misspoke when I said, hey, you kind of have to do it all by feel. Um, what you can do is what's called plug reading. So for those of you guys who are actually pretty, pretty, uh, gosh, man, I'm, I'm struggling for words today. I hate it when that happens. For those of you who are mechanically inclined, you guys have known how to, how to read spark plugs for forever. It's, you know, you literally just run the bike on a new plug and then you look at the plug and you say, hey, is it running lean or is it running rich? And the amount of carbon deposits on that head of that spark plug where that actual ignition takes place will show you, hey, if you're running too rich, there's going to be a bunch of black unburned carbon on there showing you that, hey, you have too much fuel in your combustion chamber. If you're running lean, there's going to be not enough carbon or not enough um, not enough color on that plug you read color you read the plug color uh, typically what you want is this nice nice looking like almost coffee brown um, on that on that ignition point so there's a certain term for it I don't know what it's called but I usually look for a light brown and when I know I'm there I'm like hey that's good enough for government work so Let's send it. Yeah, she definitely does have more power because of that airbox mod and because of that, because of that fueling change. Uh, usually I just stick in the right lane because I'm slow, but let's see, we're up to 62 miles an hour and that's 62 actual miles. Uh, we're still climbing. This is still a tiny little uphill, 65. Let's see here. Usually at about 68, she has nothing left. 67 but honestly I already had the Dynajet I have a 3d printer I said hey I might as well throw on that airbox mod just to see and even just with the factory bike it did help out a little bit the factory factory tune excuse me it did help out a little bit but the Dynajet is really where it's at because because you're adding more fuel or because you're adding more air with the airbox mod, 
you need to add more fuel. So I'm sure if I threw on an exhaust in a high flow header, it would really wake, wake this bike up. And as of right now, just so you guys know, my bike is slow. It, it is pretty heavily weighed down with uh, all of my luggage racks and everything like that. And then also, I'm running an oversized tire in the rear. So in terms of, I think, width, it's super knobby. Um, but I oversized, I oversized a long time ago. But it definitely hurt my performance in terms of oversizing that tire. I have this hair on my nose. Yeah, let's see. We're going to the flat slash downhill section of my commute. 69 miles an hour. Let's see if we can hit 70. Ah, uh, we're gonna hit traffic before we get there. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and start lane splitting as well. So for those of you who, you know, are lucky enough to be in California, you know, it's a common occurrence to have to lane split when you're on a motorcycle. But yeah, this airbox mod definitely, definitely made a big difference. I can feel it, which is one of those things where I kind of really had to pay attention to see if it made any difference on the stock, the stock fuel mapping. Now that I've added that that two clicks, man, it definitely has a lot more power. I guess to, to really test it, I'd have to throw on the stock airbox uh, airbox cover and then see if I have the same feeling of power. But oh, the real 100% way to test if I did get more power is to go to a dyno. Uh, and the real way to, to tune would be to go to a dyno and then have an O2 sensor put in so I can read just how well that fuel is being burned. But the XT doesn't have a computer like that, so I don't even know how that would work. I'd have to put in a, a different system. Actually, I think the Dynajet has a, an extra wire where you can add an O2 sensor, but I'm not sure on that. I'll have to go ahead and try to edit that video and see if I can parse out kind of the install procedure because with that whole thing I was kind of I hate to say it I was, you know it was kind of more than I expected it to be I thought it was just gonna be like oh yeah you just plug it in but no you gotta you gotta tap into a wire and then hopefully you tap into the right one and then initially I didn't really understand hey you're supposed to work up incrementally to different to different levels of power or different fuel maps so I kind of just overdone it overdid it which might be why my my FMF exploded. Uh, probably were running too rich. Had too much fuel. Had a backfire. Popped that can open. But yeah. Uh, I'm happy with this bike as it is right now. Uh, I'm going to do a video soon. Uh, like the... What is it? It's almost a decade now. Almost a decade of owning this bike. Uh, but I think I'm at 8 years right now. Eight years owning this bike might do an eight year review or 20,000 miles because I hit 20,000 miles look at this guy on his 300 you can tell it's a 300 or a 250 by the the rear tire look how skinny it is and how, how small his exhaust is see this is too close if you're lane splitting so I'm gonna go ahead and ease up this guy probably doesn't even know I'm behind him um, because he pretty I don't even think he head checked when he started splitting or checked his mirrors Yeah, this is like a, this is a safe speed to be lane splitting, but not a safe distance. So, for example, if this guy decided to turn in, I'd be able to, to brake accordingly or escape. Oh, there you go. Hopefully he doesn't cut back in without looking. I always get sketched out by my new riders who uh, start lane splitting. See, thankfully this guy looked in his, his side view mirror and saw that I was coming. See, this is a little bit too fast to be lane splitting because um, my reaction time in the reaction zone, this isn't a lane splitting video, but <laughs> it kind of turned into one. It's, uh, I'm, I'm traveling a little bit too fast. 
But anyways, I'm going to focus on, on what I need to do instead of just making my lips move. But thank you, thank you, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it gives you some insight on whether or not you should do the Airbox mod or pick up a Dynajet. Um, if you are going to do the Dynajet route, just make sure that, hey, it's not some one of those things that you kind of do alone. There's a lot more back-end work that you have to do, and it should be paired with a bunch of different other mods, such as the Airbox mod, and such as an exhaust mod. But um, if you want to squeak the most power out of your bike, that's the way to do it. Uh, but yeah, with the upgraded front sprocket, and with the upgrades that I have on here now, I am very happy with the, the, the XT's highway performance. Hopefully I can get a couple more miles per hour out of it. Um, because 70 is just a little bit too slow for for California highways. But for this, it's perfect. 38 miles an hour, I'll take it. But anyways, guys, with that, I think I'm going to sign off for the third time now. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, peace out.